Okay, this is uh, 2.3.4, Solving Systems of Equations. We are going to first get a couple of these uh, definitions down. So if you want to pause your screen and get down uh, the definition for systems of equations, a group of equations with the same solution, and uh, the two methods of solving systems, which are substitution and elimination. If you want to pause your screen really quickly and get those written down, and then we can continue with the notes. All right, I'm going to do uh, first example. First, I'll set it up for you, um, solving the system through substitution, and then I'll do it through the elimination method. All right, first things first, the substitution method means that I'm going to solve for one of the variables and substitute that in to the second equation. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to take this first equation because it would not take very much to get one of these variables isolated. So y plus 2x equals 2. What I'll then do is solve for y, subtracting 2x from both sides, and I've got y equals negative 2x plus 2. So now everywhere I see a y, I can replace that or substitute negative 2x plus 2 in its place. So the second equation, 8x minus 2y equals 12, instead of writing 2y, I'm going to substitute in negative 2x plus 2 for y. So here we go. 8x minus 2 times negative 2x plus 2 equals 12. Because the idea of this is that I'm eliminating one of the variables, and that's more of the elimination method, but I'm getting rid of one of the variables so that the equation that I'm solving is just got one variable in it. So by substituting in for y, I now have all x's. So I'm going to distribute this negative 2, 8x plus 4x minus 4 equals 12. Combine like terms here. 12x minus 4 is equal to 12. And now I'm going to add 4 to both sides. 12x is equal to 16. Divide both sides by 12. X is equal to 16 over 12, which reduces to 8 over 6. And finally, 4 thirds, or 1.3 repeating. So that would be my x value. I can now take that number and substitute back into the original equation here or even the original here. But instead of x, I put that 1.3 repeating or 4 thirds. So now y plus 2 times 4 thirds equals 2. I'm using the fraction because it's exact y plus 8 thirds equals 2. Now, um, what I'd like to do is I could either subtract 8 thirds from both sides, or to avoid using a calculator, I can multiply everything by 3 in an effort to not have any fractions. So then I've got 3y plus 8 equals 6. Again, that's multiplying everything by 3. And in order to make that cancel out. Now I'll subtract 8 from both sides, and I've got 3y is equal to negative 2, and divide everything by 3, y is equal to negative 2 thirds, or negative 0.67. To solve this system using the elimination method, now I should get the exact same answers as I did in the previous substitution method. So what we do here in the elimination method is we try to, quote unquote, eliminate one of the variables by finding a situation where I could cancel out the coefficients of one of the variables. So what I first want to do is line up the x's and the y's. So I'm going to rearrange in this first equation. So this system is the same thing as 2x plus y equals 2 and 8x minus 2y equals 12. Now, the way that we look at this is I try to find coefficients, one positive and one negative, and then manipulate to where I can have their coefficients be the same. So when I add them, one positive, one negative, they cancel each other out and add up to 0. So all I'm missing from this first equation is a 2. So currently the coefficients are 1, so what do I need to do to get to a 2? Well, that's multiply by 2. 
So I'm going to multiply the entire top equation by 2 in order to make this coefficient in front of the y be a 2. So now that means 2 times 2x plus y equals 2. All that's going to be multiplied by 2. 8x minus 2y equals 12 will stay the same. So that's going to become 4x plus 2y equals 4. And I keep the 8x minus 2y equals 12. So now if I added the two equations together, my y values would cancel out. So these cancel. 4x and 8x is 12x. 4 and 12 is 16. And that's a very similar step that we had in the previous substitution method where we got 12x is equal to 16. Divide both sides by 12. x is equal to 8 sixths or 4 thirds, which is 1.3 repeating as a decimal, exactly like we got on the substitution method. Now what I do, just like I did before, I plug back into either equation in order to find what my y value is. I'm going to substitute back in to the first equation because those are smaller numbers and maybe a little bit easier to work with, but it does not matter which one you use. So now y plus 2 times 4 thirds equals 2. So y plus 8 thirds equals 2. And I want to, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time where I multiply everything by 3 in order to get rid of the fraction and don't have to use a calculator. 3y plus 8 is equal to 6. Subtract 8. Subtract 8. And I get 3y is equal to negative 2. Divide both sides by 3. y is equal to negative 2 thirds or negative 0 0.67. So my two answers are x equals 4 thirds and y equals negative 2 thirds. And that one, if I wrote it as a point, 4 thirds comma negative 2 thirds that is the one point that these two lines have in common. Okay, this next example that I want to solve, it says solve the system using elimination or substitution. I think you look at the way that the equation is set up and that will tell you which method you should use. By having y isolated, that tells you you should use the substitution method because you could just take that and substitute. So, Right here, y equals 3x minus 2. That means I'm going to take 3x minus 2 and substitute it right here for this y. So now 3x minus 2 is equal to negative x minus 6. So now I want to get all the x's on the same side and all the constants on the other side. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is add x to both sides. It doesn't matter which side you send the x's to, but I like to keep the coefficient on x positive. It's just a personal preference. 4x minus 2 is negative 6. Add 2 to both sides, and I get 4x is equal to negative 4. Divide both sides by 4 to get x by itself. x is equal to negative 1. Now, in order to get the y value, I'm going to substitute that back in to the first equation. So now y equals 3, but instead of x, I'll put negative 1 minus 2. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Minus 2 is negative 5, so my solution is negative 1 comma negative 5. That's the one point that these two lines have in common. Now, a quick discussion about this. How would we solve the system in example number 2 by graphing? What we would do is we would graph the two lines, and that one place that they intersected would be that point. We could find the coordinates of that one point that they intersect at, and that would be the solution to the system, and that should match what we found by solving algebraically. So you could graph the two lines and find where they intersect and that point that they share, that one point is the solution to the system. The same thing would be true if one of the lines was a quadratic. You would find where the line intersected the parabola or whatever the two in the system were. Where the lines intersect those are solutions to the system. I want to finish up with an example from this practice section like number one that does have a quadratic with a linear. Uh, the, the solution methods are the same. We can use substitution. We can use elimination. Substitution typically is my default, especially when we have uh, one of the variables isolated like y is here. So I'm going to substitute and solve this 
quadratic linear system. So right away, instead of putting this y, I'm going to put x squared minus 5x plus 7. And that's going to be equal to 2x plus 1. So now my goal again is to get all everything on the same side, treating it like it's a quadratic equation. And then I'm going to solve it by any of my quadratic um, solving methods. Probably going to be the quadratic formula for me. Subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 1 from both sides. These cancel and go to 0. Now I've got x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. I'm going to use the quadratic formula, but you could factor this. You could complete the square. You could even graph it and find the two intercepts. So uh, for me, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, and all of that's over 2a. So a, b, and c are the coefficients of this quadratic equation. So the opposite of b, b is currently negative 7, so the opposite of that is positive 7 plus or minus the square root. Now b squared minus 4 times the a value 1 times c, which is 6. All of that's over 2 times the a value, which is 1. Okay, so I did simplify the discriminant, and I got 5. I'm sorry, I got 25, which uh, is a perfect square. So continuing to solve, 7 plus or minus the square root of 25 is 5 over 2. And now I can split into my two scenarios, 7 plus 5 over 2 and 7 minus 5 over 2. 7 plus 5 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. 7 minus 5 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. So my two x values that work are 6 and 1. What I then have to do is substitute those back in to the original and get the y values that correspond. So for instance, to find the y value at 6, I would substitute that in 2 times 6 plus 1 which is 13. So that solution is 6 and 13. And then for 1, I've got y equals 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. So that solution is 1, 3. Really quickly, I want to do this application problem with you with the cannonball firing and trying to find out where it's going to land on the hill. And this visual is a great representation because this is the place where the cannonball will hit the hill. And so that's the one place that this line and this quadratic equation have in common. So what you would do is just set the two equal to each other and solve. So real quick, just what it would look like is your system is y equals 2 plus 0.12x minus 0.002x squared and y equals 0.15x that's our system so then what I would do is just set them equal to each other and find the one place that they intersect and again that would be just substituting this in for that y value so 2 plus 0.12x minus 0.002x squared equals 0.15x and then you would solve that like the previous quadratics that we solved. So again, you see a great visual of where do they intersect at that one place right there.